Colorado River Basin boasts the highest peaks in the lower continental U.S., the widest plateaus, the deepest canyons, and the lowest deserts in North America. In the desert southwest, the climate is dry and the landscape often arid. Water management, however, through intricate irrigation and complex allocation has made the desert bloom. Today, however, water is over-allocated and shortages are expected to occur as competing needs drain more and more of the West's lifeblood. Water is the key ingredient for economic prosperity, for energy development and agriculture, for urban growth, the environment, and recreation. How that sparse resource, water, is managed in the future is an enormous challenge that will determine the social, cultural, and traditional makeup of the Southwest. Now remember, we live next door to the ocean, but we also live on the edge of a desert. Los Angeles is a desert community, and without water, the dust will rise up and cover us as though we never existed. Now the Alto Vallejo can save us from this, and I respectfully suggest that eight and one half million dollars is a fair price to pay to keep the desert from our streets and not on top of them. The history of water has long been dramatic and tumultuous. Today in the desert southwest, water shortages are pressing the limits on how we live, work, and play. In Colorado, a headwater state, we depend on the snow and rain that feed our rivers and fill our reservoirs. A complex system of laws allocates water among a growing number of needs, all of which depend upon the extensive Colorado River system. The Colorado River belongs to seven states. Uh, the 1922 Colorado River Compact allocated that water among an upper basin and a lower basin. Colorado was a part of the upper basin. In 1948, the upper basin states got together and Colorado got about half of the upper basin share. So we have about a quarter of the water supply. Water administrators in the West are approaching a day of reckoning when population growth pushes the state's water supply to its limit. Juggling the use of water against future demands is no simple task. It's a little bit like being in the middle of a rubber band, being stretched from both ends. We're being stretched by our water supplies to meet front range demands and our legal requirement to continue to allow water to go to our downstream states and, and Mexico. Making matters worse are the uncertainties of climate change and worries over a prolonged western drought. Tree ring studies show that the climate has been in a constant flux over the centuries, with evidence of more pronounced droughts in the basin than those encountered in the first part of the 21st century. In an era of climate change uh, and in an era of intense competition with downstream uh, states over the Colorado River's water, you know, we have to be very, very careful how we use this remaining resource that we have. The four major demands on water in Colorado are population, agriculture, recreational, and environmental needs and energy. Colorado State where 85 to 90 percent of our water historically has gone for agricultural use. But now we're starting to see shifts in that and we have very intense competition going on today over the state's water resources. Part of that is fueled by two and a half million new people that we expect by 2030. And beyond that, another two million people by 2050. If you have 80% of the population living on the front range and you see these very significant population increases, uh, I think we're gonna have a situation in the future where we have a sprawling city, basically from north of Fort Collins to south of Pueblo. So that's one major factor in this pressure on Collins water. And then agriculture is um, the other sector that is so important to Colorado's future. Agriculture today is about a $16 billion industry, but agriculture is facing significant pressures over 
competition for water resources and the shifting of water resources from agriculture to cities and municipalities. Many Colorado farms and ranches have managed water for over 100 years. Mel Reddick is a second generation Western Slope farmer in the Grand Junction area. Well, without water here in the valley, it's a desert, so we wouldn't have any plants growing at all other than desert plants. Water is just critical to our, uh, to our agricultural needs. Where it used to be just primarily agriculture would demand the use of the water, now there's four major demands, and in some way we need to be able to figure out how to uh, furnish enough water for uh, the population. It's just going to be a combination and a juggling act. Colorado ranchers are land stewards who represent a rich cultural legacy. Carlisle Courier is a third generation West Slope rancher in the Grand Mesa area. A lot of people think of agriculture only in terms of, of growing crops or only in terms of food. But agriculture, I think, is very important to the culture of Western Colorado. You know, about 75% uh, of the land in Western Colorado is, is public land. Yet about 75% of the wildlife is on private land. And they're here because of the irrigated farmland, the irrigated cropland we have. If we dry up farmland, we're going to affect those, those issues of wildlife habitat, that open space that people in Western Colorado value. So I think it's very important, not just to us farmers, but to the people of Western Colorado as a whole, that we're able to maintain a viable irrigated agriculture in this part of the state. Another pressure that's occurring in Colorado is over energy development. Uh, Colorado, particularly in Western Colorado, has extraordinary energy resources. Uh, these are resources which are nationally in demand, perhaps even internationally in demand. And so a lot of people are looking to Colorado, particularly Western Colorado, to provide those resources. Today, oil and gas are highly visible on the Western Colorado landscape. Looming in the future is the potential for oil shale, projected as the highest water user in the energy sector. Water administration in the future is going to change as a result of increase, the increase in the oil and gas industry. And I think people would be very surprised if they went up on Piance Creek and saw how much land is no longer privately owned. It's owned by the bigger companies. And all of these companies either already have decreed augmentation plans and, and change of water rights or they're in, in court right now doing just that. We know that in terms of seniority that 